students welcome to the session 6 students in our previous session we have explained about html html what is html it is a hypertext markup language and you have learned many of the tags related to html so what is xml now so what is xml again it is a type of a language language it is called an extended extended markup language it is an extended markup language so what is html is hypertext markup language again is a language and xml is again a language it is full form is extended markup language if i say extended so it is a next version of or next version of xml so it's going to provide different features apart from html so this is this xml it provides a structured structured information or it provide structured content the one what is the meaning of the word structure means here all the informations with if you i mean with all the informations or contents or which can be structured or arranged in a definite order so in definite fashion so that is the meaning of xml now let us look into the difference between what is xml and xml so that you know the difference between so you can understand better now what is the difference between xml language and html language let us write one by one and already have written first point it is extended markup language it is extended markup language this is hypertext hypertext markup language second point is it focus it focus on transfer of data transfer of data or nothing but exchange of data or information exchange of data and here this html this focus is only the presentation this is presentation data it focus on presentation what do you mean presentation see here the meaning of presentation is however you want to look the data it will be displayed as it is that is meaning of presentation but what is xml this feature is a uh, important feature of this xml is that it focus on transfer of data and exchange of data within a particular website so this can be developed like this this is second feature next one is called it is more structured i already have told you structured is nothing but where it has some protocols it is less structured as compared to xml more structured means it provides us it provide a very good format of data so that it can be accessed and used very easily so that is meaning of more structured in nature next one is it is more flexible it is more flexible and it is less flexible here for example you take the comma any of the tags here we are using exactly as it is but in this example we have with the help of this feature of xml it has to be it can be modified 
modified as per our requirement, as per the user's requirement. So this is more flexible and this is important is case sensitive. This is case sensitive and it is not case sensitive. So if we, what do you mean of case sensitive? In you might have come across in, in some example in HTML. In HTML tags or program what you have learned in first year, you can make use of either uppercase or lowercase characters. But it is not like that in XML because it is a case sensitive language. Now there is a difference between uppercase and lowercase characters. Next one is it is not predefined. Not predefined and here is all our predefined tags predefined tags see by looking at the last point we can make out how the how flexible it is here all the tags what we're using will be predefined we're using exactly as it is and here in under XML we have an option or a user a programmer have an option for making some slight changes because there is no predefined tax here there is no free uh, free uh, sorry there is no predefined commands here so by looking at the different by looking at the differences so we can make out that this is this xml has more features as compared to html language Students, next we move on to another concept that is DHTML. It stands for Dynamic Dynamic HTML. So you might have come up to some example like dynamic and opposite dynamic is static so here dynamic html is nothing but this html dynamic means it is changing the meaning of the word dynamic is changing quite opposite to another is called static static so there are you might have come across some in maybe in your experience you might have come across some examples some words like static website and dynamic website what do you mean by static website if you if you talk about static website here the once website has been developed or created that we have to use it exactly as it is without any modifications and here the clients or the user cannot modify any data cannot add anything to it and cannot take out any of the information unless information from the website so under dynamic and under dynamic html or under dynamic dynamic website there are some options so that you will be much more he has given much more freedom to the clients or the user so here the user can add whenever he any new information to be added he can add it he can add this to the website and whenever he wanted to take out on one information that has to be that can be removed within this dynamic html so again it is nothing but nothing but a dynamic html is a language now let us see the features of dynamic html this dynamic HTML it is a combination of it is a combination of HTML previous version of HTML language along with that some some internet options along with internet options 
so what is the meaning of this so a dynamic html is nothing but a language so it is they have given, along with the html it has another added features through internet option that is the meaning of that is the one difference next one is this is also developed with help of web developing technology web developing technology so here these two features are added here so it is again nothing but combination of html as well as internet option and web developing technology so all these together 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 gives extra feature html so we call it as dynamic html and what is the meaning of dynamic html as i told you already it the general meaning is keeps changing so what is keeps changing any website which has been downloaded with the with the help of or with uh, dhtml or html here these websites the contents of websites contents of websites can is changing changing or by view view how it can be changed it depends on the geographical geographical location of the user location of the user and the time time of the view and again the profile of the profile of the reader profile of the reader so dear students what is the meaning of this dynamic website here or dynamic html see any website which has been developed with the help of dhtml those type of websites within the website the contents which can be changed or what is the meaning of changing the contents by view suppose and this view is depends it depends on the following three points here we again geographical location of the user see suppose one of the user maybe here he will be he will be viewing the website he will be working with the website at particular location and for his view is different and as and some other customer may be another user may be view, he may view the con, uh, content of the website visit the website at some other different, different location and for them for both of them views of the website will be different so i mean it keeps changing that is the meaning that is the meaning of dynamic so that is the meaning of dynamic website or dhtml and apart from that is the time suppose if i look at for example if i now at this time if i visit any of the website the content maybe if i look at the content or the maybe the design or the background color it keeps changing ma'am if i look at the say if i visit the same website maybe after 10 minutes it may be changed again so that is the meaning of dynamic website or that is the feature of dhtml next one is profile of the reader again this also there are nowadays you can see that you might have come across some example through internet say suppose if in the internet if you click on any of the advertisement by mistake or intentionally and you are you you are keep on getting the same advertisement maybe for few more days see that is that that that, that is because of the within the server or within their application your profile will be read or it will be recognized by some some of the administration people and they will keep on posting uh, your some information maybe email or picture whatever is to to you so that is that is nothing but that is the, that is because of that is the meaning of profile of the reader so by considering these three points it is so by, with the help of these three points this contents or images or it can be keeps changing so this is about dhtml and here dht dhtml what are the features of dhtml dh dhtml the features of features of dhtml 
first one is it is an object oriented object oriented view of web page of web page second cascading cascading styles cascading styles or layering of content layering of content next one is programming programming that addresses that address all the elements of the page next one is called dynamic fonts now let us look into this one by one students here these type of websites are a web website developed with the help of dhtml it has the following features what is the meaning of that if you look into that you take a simple example any website with a following features see suppose you take example here i am going to write here as gsip as a heading under that we have course i say commerce science under this we have e b a c s e b a s and here p c m b p c m c just imagine that just suppose if you have website like this in this website here if you look at a website you may find heading like this under this we have a subheading under this we have two tabs here commerce and science under this we have number and the combinations available under these sections in this one if i talk about what is the object oriented view what is the meaning of that here whenever this one heading this is heading of the website or within the website it is it is one object it is object 1 and this is object 2 this is object 2 and these are all considered as different objects object 3 like this so here whenever we are developing a website so we are going to view our website can be viewed in an object oriented view the meaning is that this is we are treating as one object second object next object all these are all different objects so this is uh this is the meaning of an object oriented view so what is the, what is the advantage of this here this any changes has to be done for one object it can be done with the help of programming so without disturbing the coding or programming for other objects so this is nothing but object oriented view of your web page next one is called cascading styles or layering of content what is the meaning of layering of a content suppose if you have a one website here this is a website this is normally we say generally we talk about this on one layer suppose if you have a background of this website suppose i want to go for a background background with different color see that is one more layer so this is the meaning of what is the meaning of layering of layering of contents layering of content so suppose if you have at the same time if i want to have say this is this a course under this for this i want to have a different background that can be done so here background is background is a uh, one layer and over on top then over it we have courses this is object is placed over it so here all the contents or the informations are placed or placed or placing one over the other it is that is called as layering concept so this is it also provide a cascading of styles or layering of content next programming 
address all uh, i mean programming which is going to address all the elements of, of the website so anything on the website for example are called elements of website for example this is the one heading is a website your image if you want to have an image it is one of the one of the one of the element your heading any any source of information on the internet maybe within the website are termed as elements so these elements are addressed separately that is again advantage of object oriented view here so this is separate program or separate code for this separate code for this separate code for this so this is nothing but your and this is support the feature is that it's going to support programming for all the elements on the website or within the particular website next one is called dynamic fonts what is the meaning of dynamic fonts generally uh, how many of you, i don't know how many of you experience it even have experience at this see whenever i open any of the website any of the website so generally these website have been doubled with particular fonts so any of the website which has been doubled with the particular fonts and when you view the website when you open any of the website if that particular font is not available in your system or generally we say in client system normally when we say that see all website just now i told you in the, at the beginning these website will be stored in the server stored at the server level and all the clients or all the user are accessing these websites through web browser through web client isn't it so these web client what are the meaning and here if, we, if you open the sum of the website automatically what happens the fonts within the website is changed or is going to change it depends on the web browser so what is the meaning of dynamic fonts suppose some of the fonts used in the website if, if, if it is not available within the client system or within the, at the client level so it is going to manage it so it going to support or it is going to support the fonts which are not available within the or in the client system so this is this is nothing but your dynamic font so this is nothing but this is about the dhtml dhtml dynamic hypertext markup language now students let us go to next concept that is web scripting web scripting next we will move on to another concept that is web scripting that is web scripting so what is web scripting this is nothing but a process of process of creating and embedding scripts embedding embedding scripts in the web page in the web page is known as web scripting generally scripting is nothing but programming normally we say web a programming what is the meaning of this scripting is nothing but process of creating and embedding scripts within web page normally generally the meaning of embedding is it is nothing but adding something to it if you look at if you look at the example like in a computer when you on the computer when you work with the computer it is there is also a feature called calc calc calculator when you type calc at the 
or the starter you are going to get the calculator so you are able to work with the calculator then you immediately closing it so here that calc a calculator is an is one program which is embedded in your computer system nothing but in your operating system isn't it so that is the meaning of the word embedded or embedding is nothing but it is additional features or additional program a small programs which is available along with the operating system of your computer so this is nothing but your embedding embedding system so similarly what is embedding script web scripting here there are these are nothing but a programs the programs with the help of this some other small programs just like calculator just have to similarly so many features or so many small applications which can be loaded which can be loaded or programmed within the website that is nothing but here that is nothing but web scripting and here under web scripting there are types of web scripting there are there are two types of web scripting there are two types of web script web scripting they are first one is called client side scripting second one is called server side server side scripting so here and for example for client side scripting is nothing but to get data to get data from the user to get data from the user or online games and customizing customizing the display of page of web page now students look into that here there are two types of web scripting here one is client side web scripting here now you know at this moment you know the difference between client as well as server server is a place or server is a system where ever all these resources are stored or available so client who are the called the clients clients are nothing but the user i mean here in this example web browser is a client the user will access the web server detail information through web browser there is a web client so here client side scripting what is the meaning of client side scripting here the script team can be written or it is a small program so it is going to work it it will be working at the client level if i say client level at the web browser level where it doesn't have any impact or effect on the server so here all activities all all the activities are restricted or will be executed within the at the client level so that is the meaning of client for example to get data to get data from the user see for example you are going to if you look at some example of some forms isn't it if you look at the forms maybe in any of the website maybe some application form you are going to apply online for a, for any of the job application if you look into that you are going to enter some details it may they they may going to ask you or there are some fields where they you may have to enter first name second name date of birth so many information all these are data you are getting or entering in the form of forms that is at the client level so as that is it goes to the, you are entering at the 
client level. Next, some you, you might be familiar with the games. This is also an example for client side scripting. Here, online games, whenever you open your website, when you start playing games, so you are directly the particular game or particular application, it will be sent all the instructions sent to the client. So it will be or it will be executed at the client level. It may not have any impact or effect on the server side application. So that is games and customize the display of the page. Suppose just now we are talking about dynamic HTML. So here all the information. Suppose uh, here I want to here I want to view that with a different color. So when you change the color of color of the element on the uh, the element of the website, that doesn't have any effect on the server. So here all the activities or happen happenings or happens at the client level at the web browser level. That is that is client side scripting. Now if you look into that server side scripting and here as quite opposite to it at here all the activities or executing will takes place at the server level through through client or web browser for example example for server side script that is your password protection that is password protection next your form processing and dynamically changing changing web content content these are all ex these three are the example for server side scripting means here what is the meaning of that say whenever whenever you are going to log in you might be knowing what is the login id and password isn't it so if you want to get into any of the website or any of the particular website so it will ask you for your registered login id and password isn't it so that pass who is so where your password will be stored and as soon as you enter username and password as you click on login so directly the password it will be stored under or at the server level so whatever you have entered through web browser it will be compared or checked at the server level so and it validated so if suppose if there is a mistake then it's going to reject it so that is your password that is an example for your server side scripting and similarly form processing just now i told you here whenever i want to apply for for any application or when i want to register i want to register new email id i want to create new email id in that case it is going to ask you for some information like first name second name and other data date of birth data place login every so many information so as soon as you enter all the fields given in the form you are going to click on a submit button isn't it so as well as you submit button so all the information will be executed at the will be stored under server level at the server level so this is example example is form processing next one dynamically changing content for example I, as i told you a few minutes back when you're talking about dhtml dynamic website dynamic website means the contents are changing isn't it so here users have all the rights to change the contents as well as the information uh, under the limitation so those changing of the contents are adding information all these can be done it is i mean is going it will be working under server level so these three are the few uh, this these are the three examples under server side scripting okay dear students let me conclude the session at this stage and let me summarize what you have learned in this session so here i have started with what is web hosting the definition of web hosting and types of web hosting there i had explained about free web hosting sharing co-location as well as one is what's free web hosting 
and next web next uh, i have told you about web 2.0 that is again a website with additional feature it and it encourages or provides interactive sessions through web browser next we have learned the difference between xml and html xml is extended markup language it has it has additional features um, i mean when compared to html and next one is dhtml dynamic html it is a language where uh, the, i told you the difference between static as well as dynamic so static means intact there is no change here all the content of the website or remain same only users can view the information and content of it and with uh, in the quite opposite to dynamic here in dynamic websites are uh, with the help of through dynamic html so these websites contents can be changed or removed or add can be added under certain limitations so that then, then at last i have told you about uh, i mean again under html we have discussed about the features of html object oriented view means all the elements of a website or we are we are treating it or we are uh, scripting with the help of i mean we are scripting or viewing as an object and it has many features like cascading means layering of contents and again dynamic fonts suppose what is the example i have told you and suppose any of the the fonts used in the website is not available at the client side so this web client the browser is going to manage or is going to provide the same web, uh, the same fonts so that is dynamic fonts apart from that at last i had told uh, we have discussed about web scripting web scripting is nothing but a programming and here here it provides and we i mean i mean a feature of embedding applications or uh, embedding is nothing but adding so our add on some additional software or information will be available within your website so the, that can be done with the help of web scripting there are two levels of activities one is server level server side scripting and client side scripting so here server level client side activate at the client or the client level at the uh, client level means nothing but the web browser level it doesn't have any impact on server applications and and the server here server level server server level side scripting here all activities will take by the server level so for ex a very good example is your password oh students hope we ha you have learned or understood few terms with respect to web hosting if you have any doubts at any point of time you are most welcome you can text me you can contact me at any point of time thank you very much